I don't want to get a 55 for CAD. I won't be able to handle that. But the more important question actually is how much does the boat weigh? Because it's the weight of the boat that's going to determine the size of the winches and the size of the sails because you have to push that weight through the water. Okay? So a 55 foot really high performance boat with the room inside of a 45 is just as easy, if not easier, to sail than a 45 foot boat. So don't get stuck on the size thing so much. A few feet, five feet here or there, it's not the issue. The, the, there could be an issue if you're in a, in a situation where you've got a dock space where you can only take X or some of you maybe want to do the intercoastal waterway, in that instance, you're going to be limited. You don't really want to get a boat mast over 63 feet off the walls, right? And so then that limits things. That's the question I always ask people, do you want to do the ICW? Because we've chopped off mass of some boats just to, to solve that, that, that problem. I have to say that one thing that's been really fascinating about catamarans and catamaran design since I started this business and I've been doing it is that 15 years ago, a typical 47-foot catamaran had 27 horsepower engines. Now, a typical 47-foot catamaran has 75 horsepower turbos. Okay? Okay, well, why is that? Well, there's a couple reasons, but the primary reason is that the boats are getting wider and wider and wider, and they're getting, wind they're getting more and more windage. Like, the flywheel boats have a lot of windage, and you've got you know, big superstructures and what have you. It's not a negative, but the issue is when you get a boat that is very wide and quite heavy uh, and you're trying to go upwind with that boat with fixed keels, it's very difficult to point higher than 50 degrees to the true wind. Okay? It's very important that you understand that. Okay? This, what happens is you can point any catamaran up into the wind at 45 degrees and get your telltale streaming back. But what happens is, is you've got these keels and the boat kind of wallops and it sort of slides sideways. So you have to pick that spot where you're not sliding too much. And with the keel cats, usually in any kind of bumpy seas, you have to crack off to about 50, 52 degrees the true wind. So if you decide to get a keel cat that's rather heavy and wide, upgrade the engines. I promise you, you will be motor sailing into the wind. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. And in fact, a lot of people are doing that now. They're just motor sailing into the wind. But understand that on 45 degrees to either side of the sailing circle, it's not a no-sail zone, but if you want to sail it, you're not going to be making but three knots to your dead wind, upwind destination. Your velocity ain't any good. And I mean, I don't know about you, but when I'm going three and a half knots, I'm thrown in the top. I mean, you know, that, that's just not fast enough, right? So I'm just going to you know, put the engines down and, and get to where I'm going. And the fact of the matter is, is that you can motor straight to a destination at seven knots with your 75 horsepower turbos a lot faster than a guy with a high performance cap who's going, you know, nine knots at 45. You're still going to get there faster, right? The only thing is, when you start motor sailing, if you're into bumpy seas, it can get kind of. How many of you have banged into, you know, big seas? And it can get a little, you know, noisy at times. Okay, so that's something that is just a trade-off, and it's important to understand. Um, 